Is this working? Yes. Okay, terrific. All right. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Thank you for coming to our side event, and welcome to those of you who are joining online. Um, we were just uh, pausing for a moment uh, for our FAO Deputy Director General to come open this event, but she's also tied up in a breakfast upstairs, so I think we'll go ahead with, uh, with this now. Um, again, thanks for coming on this snowy uh, Saturday morning in, uh, in Montreal, and we understand also we're competing with the, uh, the World Cup third place match, which started 10 minutes ago as well. <laughs> So, so, so this is this is a tough a tough time frame to uh, to fill. But uh, thanks again. We're, we'll be presenting the the Jeff Eight Food Systems Program today. My name is Jeffrey Griffin. I'm the coordinator of the Jeff Program at FAO, and I'm joined today by my colleague Miss Janie Rue, who's the coordinator of the Jeff Program at EFOD. Would you like to just introduce yourself, Janie? Hi everyone, nice meeting you. Uh, Jenny Rio, so I'm a senior climate and environment specialist at IFAD and managing the Jeff and Adaptation Fund. Um, good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Zimski. I'm the coordinator and lead of the biodiversity program at the Jeff Secretariat. Okay, so. Uh, Friends, uh, today we will be. We'll start with, um, uh, with with our, our deputy director general still delayed. We'll start right into the the agenda then, with uh, some brief remarks from from Mark, on the integrated programming of the Jeff, setting the context for our discussion today on food systems. That'll be followed by a presentation of the actual Jeff Eight Food Systems program itself, and then my I'll do that, and then my colleague Janie will present. The, um, the, the timeline for the development of this program, as well as the think, some of the thinking that's going into the design of the, of the program itself, because we'll be elaborating this in more detail, as well as a, a, a coordinating project, a global platform project. So we'll be talking about those things. And then after those presentations, which we hope will, won't take more than 20, 25 minutes, we'll have time for uh, open discussion with all of you. So without further ado, Mark, please. Yes, um, I'll be very brief because the, the, the sizzle of this program is the <clears throat> design and aspiration uh, of this side event is the design and aspiration that's embedded in the food systems program. Uh, but uh, Jeff had asked me to just give you a snapshot about Jeff 8 programming overall and how this program fits into it. Uh, as many of you know, Jeff historically for each four-year period, develop strategies related to our various focal areas uh, that respond to the guidance we get from the Conference of the Parties, with Jeff serving as the financial mechanism to the CBD. This has been the normal course of business since its inception. Over the last 10 years, there's been a shift in programming within the Jeff towards more integrated programming, where we're addressing multiple environmental problems within the context of one investment, trying to support systemic responses that address drivers of environmental degradation and touch upon many of the multilateral environmental agreements for which we serve as the financial mechanism. In Jeff 8, we have 11 integrated programs that are attempting to do this, and that many of which we posit will have uh, direct and indirect benefits to biodiversity and help produce the biodiversity outcomes we're all seeking to achieve. It's very strongly correlated to the whole of government, multi-sectoral uh, ethos, if you will, of the global biodiversity framework that pushes biodiversity and extends biodiversity as a thematic uh, uh, something of thematic importance to sectors beyond the traditional environment sector, which is what Jeff focused on at its inception. So the, the COP in this convention has been very successful in <clears throat> promoting biodiversity as, a, uh, as central to sustainable development and human well-being 
And this program on food systems with agriculture and aquaculture, <clears throat> it's been a long two weeks, uh, being a potential driver of biodiversity loss is very opportune. And it builds on a program we started in Jeff Seven. So I think I will now pass it back to Jeff to explain the program in more detail. But we're really excited that FAO and EFAD, two of the 18 Jeff agencies that have a long history working in this space of sustainable agriculture and the interface between biodiversity, climate change, and agriculture, we're really excited that they're leading this program on behalf of the Jeff Partnership. So Jeff? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, could we, uh, we're, in the, we're in the PowerPoint. Okay, so colleagues, the, Jeff, the food systems program in Jeff 8. Next slide. So here in this slide, you, it gives you some basic information that underlies the rationale of this program. Uh, you can see some of the key the elements Mark just summarized here about food systems, which we're hearing you know, is coming out strongly, not only for biodiversity, but also climate change. It's a key, key driver of climate change worldwide, unsustainable food systems. I always tell people the bad news, good news story. The, the bad news is that unsustainable food systems are a key driver of these environmental, of environmental degradation worldwide, of biodiversity loss, climate change, land degradation, water pollution, et cetera. The good news is that sustainable agri-food systems are the solution. And it's that simple statement, that simple dichotomy that underlies the rationale for this, for this, uh, for this program. And also, I would say, for our robust engagement, both FAOs and EFODs, with, with the Jeff Partnership. Next slide. So this is the, um, you can see here the, the overall objective of the program to catalyze the transformation of food systems to a sustainable level that are nature positive, resilient, and pollution reduced. And you see the priorities, the priority areas of focus there for transformative change. There are three systems, livestock systems, sustainable and regenerative agriculture, which will focus on, on uh, crops and commodities such as wheat and rice and corn. And also aquaculture uh, is a new addition to the Jeff Food Systems program. Um, and of course, as Mark said, um, these, this program will be contributing uh, in a cross-cutting way to all three Rio conventions, in addition to others, I would say. So this program will be designed to definitely to generate biodiversity benefits. So you'll, we'll be hearing more about that later during our discussion about the relationship between this program and the hopefully soon to be approved global biodiversity framework, but also the key relationship with land degradation the, uh, and, 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 and sustainable land management, uh, as well as, of course, climate change. Uh, the next slide. So here are the, uh, the, the objectives, you could say, broken down by the areas of focus for the program itself uh, to shift um, uh, towards sustainable regenerative food production in key crops and commodities, to reduce the impact of livestock on the environment, and to expand investment and, and, and shift aquaculture to a more sustainable trajectory as well. And this is going to be a focus on land-based and coastal aquaculture. Next. This is a, a slide that shows the overall approach of the program. As you can see there, the, the three areas of focus in the lower left, the targeted systems. Um, uh, the program will have uh, a global platform uh, to, to help scale up and, and generate impact at the global level, help scale up the child projects, the, the national child projects. And of course, there'll be a substantial amount of, of work done on governance and policies to improve financial leverage, uh, multi-stakeholder dialogues, and innovation and learning. And our two organizations will be leading the design of this, of this program going forward to ensure that it does that. All, all gearing up to have that systemic change um, and, and achieve those global environmental benefits as well as socioeconomic benefits that are so important for, for all of us. And next slide. So this, I think my colleague Janie will be saying more about this. You can see this is a, a sort of an outline of the overall program with um, starting with the targeted food systems at the top, 
And then the two main elements of the program will be a global platform uh, managed by FAO and EFOD, but with involving many different partners. And then countries will express interest to take part in this program. Uh, that's the, the fundamental key element of that. That will happen in January this year. Janie will say more about that. So there'll be, we, the Jeff terminology is country child projects, but there you could just think of them as country projects under the global program. Uh, uh, and we, we don't know how many there will be yet. Uh, it depends on country interest and country demand, but we anticipate between 20 and 30 of those. Um, next. And here you see some of the key areas of emphasis that are, will be uh, designed, included in the program to, to le lever influence and enhance system transformation, including a focus on governance and policies, both at the country level and at the global level, on financial leverage as well, both at the country level and at the global level, on multi-stakeholder dialogues, and a real focus on innovation uh, and innovative practices across the board. Uh, next slide. And here's uh, the core indicators of the program. So the GEF uh, has its, uh, its, its, uh, its key indicators of success for the GEF 8 program. And you can see here uh, the, 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 the indicators that this program will be designed to help achieve at the, at the national level. You can see among all those different country, country projects, 25,000 hectares under restoration, 3.1 million hectares of landscapes under improved management. You can see there the greenhouse gas emissions mitigated. That's the target for that, um, and so on. And with that, I think I hand over to, to Janie. But let me pause, and um, I see that our Deputy Director General from FAO has arrived. Would you like us to continue with this? And okay. We'll have our, our Maria Elena Semedo will we'll weigh in at, at a later point. So Janie, please, next. Thank you very much. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so that might look complicated, but it's just really to represent a little bit the interaction between the country projects and the global coordination projects. Um, so today we'd like your, your feedback on both those aspects, what the global coordination project can do that it's most useful in terms of informing back the country projects on these different aspects of finance, private sector engagement, uh, also technical assistance, knowledge, innovation, policy, uh, and also uh, the country projects, lesson learns and experience and, and country context will inform also um, the work that will be done in the global coordination project. And, and, the, and the global coordination project will connect to the larger initiative, coalition, network, platform that are uh, relevant for food systems and different regions and different crops, commodities, livestock, aquaculture. Uh, and that all together, that's really uh, the transformational impact that, it's, uh, that, is, that is foreseen and that, um, that the Jeff approach on these integrated programs is, is looking at. Next slide, please. So this, um, that's a little bit of the OBS, uh, to give you a flavor of what are these OBS and the global coordination projects. Uh, so you can see, uh, well, one will be more the management and the M&E, and that will be uh, really very much focus on uh, connecting with these country projects. And <coughs> the other three hubs, one will be on policy outreach and strategic alignment. Uh, and there uh, we will connect with all the food systems, summit post work, um, where many countries have developed uh, food system pathways, uh, also discussion on, on food security uh, globally. So. There will be different, as you can see in the box, I will not read everything, but that's uh, more on the global policy influence. Then another hub will be more specific to innovation, technical support, and knowledge management, and will connect also with research, academia, NGOs, uh, media, so that is more for uh, the global knowledge aspects. And also the innovation and technical assistance to the country projects. And the third hub, uh, very important, and this food system IP is all the leverage finance, the value chain actors, the private sector engagement. And here, as you can see, it's, uh, it's connecting really with the kind of more larger resource mobilization for scale up and greater impact and to sustainable food system and also the, um, the private sector and a lot of existing platforms and initiative and coalition, so we will tag on to these and not, you know, 
and, and build on uh, and connect that program with, with these existing platforms. Next slide. So here, that's very, I mean, we had a workshop actually last week, a brainstorming workshop with uh, Peter Ubune, the Jeff lead on food system uh, that is not here today with us, but uh, he came to Rome last week and we had a good brainstorming with the FAO and IFA technical teams. Uh, so this is just to, you know, put a bit of some ideas. Uh, you can see where uh, the Fuller uh, projects are located and we've tried to see what about the food system program, where could be some uh, kind of cluster or, you know, of uh, potential food system projects where um, there is a bit of a concentration of these crop commodities or aquaculture or livestock so that the lesson learned and the scaling up potential is there. Um, so you can see a little bit where, uh, you know, some ideas that um, are, are, being, uh, are being explored and that will really depend also of the country interests and, and the country projects that will be proposed. Next slide. This is a more uh, focusing on livestock and where, uh, you know, there's some uh, cluster of livestock system that have uh, some impacts on the environment, on GHG emission, on biodiversity. So we're looking at uh, this kind of beef and soybean in, uh, in South uh, America. There's also uh, maybe the dairy in Eastern Africa more rangeland and West Africa and certain Africa, and then Central Europe, uh, so, sorry, Central Asia, uh, dairy in India, and also more the kind of pig uh, in, uh, in Asia. So those are, again, just idea, re really trying to look at baseline data and where, um, you know, where uh, to inform also the country, the country projects so that they're very representative of these different systems and the program can bring uh, more transformative impact, scaling up, and, and lessons. Uh, next slide, I think that's uh, the timeline and next step. So that's the last slide. I just wanted to, I mean, it's uh, basically we started this summer when the launch for, uh, for leads of these integrated program was launched by the Jeff uh, in July, um, August. Then um, the co-leadership by FAO and IFAD has been approved by the council in the first week of December. And uh, we had last week the first workshop, really brainstorming be with the JEFSEC and FAO and IFAD teams. Uh, and now we're in a process of a little bit outreach, engagement with partners, JEF agencies and countries. Uh, the launch of the country project, expression of interest by the JEF Secretariat will be mid-January uh, uh, for submission in mid-February. Uh, and then there will be the review and, um, and, and selection of the country projects by the JEFSEC staff and the two co-leads agencies. Uh, and we're planning also kind of a design workshop with uh, the agencies that will be involved in the key partners around February, March. And then the submission for June Council is the 12th of April. So yeah, timeline is quite tight. Uh, Maybe depending, uh, you know, maybe not all the country project will be selected for June. Maybe they will be in a second round. We'll, we'll see, depending on what uh, is proposed by countries at that stage. Uh, but that's a bit the timeline we're working uh, with. And this is, is very tight, but on the other end, it's because it's important that there's a synchronization between the global coordination project and the country project so that they can work together throughout implementation. Uh, that's a lesson learned from previous Jeff cycle on these uh, integrated programs. So I will, I'll stop here and um, thank you. Back to you, Jeff. Okay, thank you very much, Janie. So, Mark? Yeah, before, we, before we continue, I, I think for the audience uh, who aren't super familiar with the Jeff, just one point of clarification. So the Jeff operates on four-year phases, right? We're now, have just started July of this year is Jeff 8. In Jeff 7, we had a similar program called FOLOR, which was referred to in the presentation, food, land use, and restoration. Uh, as we gained experiences from that, and you saw many uh, of the existing programs identified in the slides, uh, for Jeff 8, we kind of separated out restoration, although there will be some restoration in this program, and we have another integrated program solely focused on ecosystem restoration to respond to not only the imperative that's coming out of this COP towards restoration uh, 
of ecosystems that are biodiverse, relevant for biodiversity, but other conventions as well, such as the Land Degradation Convention. And of course, there are benefits to climate change mitigation through restoration. So there's just a kind of point of information so that this is seen as a kind of evolution from what we did over the past four years and will build on an existing portfolio of investment uh, going forward. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. And uh, you know, I would think I would say briefly before um, I introduce our, our deputy director general to say a few uh, remarks. Um, this this story of increasing integration is one that is, I think, has played out across many organizations. The Jeff, as Mark pointed out, but also I can say at FAO and I would imagine at EFOD too, where we've increasingly become more and more integrated in how we address these complex challenges going forward. Maria Elena, may I hand over the, give you my chair and hand over the microphone? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Maria Helena Semedo, the Deputy Director General of FAO, to say a few remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and uh, good morning to all. Sorry to be late, but I was in another event. Uh, it was delayed. <laughs> I couldn't be at the same time, but uh, I could follow that the colleagues has already introduced the Jeff 8 impact program on transforming agri-food systems. Uh, let me just share with you uh, some thoughts. We are here to discuss the global 2020 uh, global biodiversity framework. Uh, if we look what is proposed, we see that several of the targets, they are related to agri-food systems. Why? When we talk about agri-food system, you say always they are the drivers of biodiversity loss. Maybe, maybe no, is the reality. But we are not here to say that something we, we know. We are here to say they are the driver, but they can be the solution. And our um, responsibility is to see how we can have and bring the solutions. And one of the solutions is what has been said, is to have an integrated approach. How we can bring agriculture sectors together to bring the solutions to the biodiversity loss. And when we, I just came, I was late because I was in an event on soils and biodiversity. It's an area we didn't discuss much here. But how we can have biodiversity loss if we don't have healthy soils, if we don't have healthy soils, we don't have water, uh, we cannot produce. And those are the thinking we need to have around this Global Biodiversity 2020 framework. And we in FAO, we have the transformation of agri-food system as one of the main driver of our new FAO strategic framework. We approved three years or five years ago, the new strategy on bio in, uh, mainstreaming by agriculture uh, sectors across biodiversity, because we see that we cannot see biodiversity in isolation. We have to include in all agriculture policies biodiversity in the fisheries, and they have to be seen as one and in a strategic and a com comprehensive way. And this is uh, why FAO have this mainstreaming uh, agri-food syst systems in biodiversity. And for that, we are working with the countries to have their national strategy, because it has to be contextualized. I every country cannot have the same strategy, and we need to support the countries. And what we, how we do it? We think that FAO, we have the technical expertise, we have the tools, we have the guidelines, and we have the data. We are here to talk about Jeff, about resources, it's important. But it's important to get it, to do it right. And to do it right is more than finance, it's how to do it. What is the knowledge we have? What is the best experience we have that we can bring to the countries to help them to move this agenda forward? And I think it's this linkage with the knowledge of FAO, the resources Jeff can put uh, to FAO and others that bring us together to get it right and to have the appropriate investment we need to transform because we need to move at scale. And this is, I think, what the Jeff, Jeff 8 program brings, not to have 
a small project, but to have projects that we can bring results, we can move at scale, and we can transform and have impact and results. And another public good FAO produce is data and information. We need to monitor. We need to know that what we are doing is correct. If you are having the impact we expect, and is not how to correct what we need to do. And for this, FAO, what we produce in terms of data, the experience we have with Red Plus and others in terms of monitoring, verification, uh, is important also to move this agenda forward. Regarding Jeff 8, you introduce it. I think what is important that we have the countries on the lead for them to see what they want, how they want to be engaged in this program, but also to keep in mind that we are talking about countries, but we are also talking about smallholder farmers, we are talking about indigenous people, we are talking about fisheries, we are talking about women, youth, and they also have to be involved in this agenda in a way that we move forward. Biodiversity is our common good. We need to preserve, we need to conserve, and we need to have a sustainable use of our biodiversity to have a healthy planet and to have a healthy life for all of us. This is what I wanted to say, that FAO is ready to work with the countries, FAO is ready to contribute. We have the knowledge, we think, that uh, what is discussing here, we can, uh, we can bring a lot from our, our experience, from the, um, the network we have around the countries, and the cross-fertilization, bringing success story, best practices from one region, one country to another. And we have this platform that we can offer in, to this program. This is what I wanted to say, Jeff. Thank you again, and I uh, wish you a fruitful discussion. Okay, thank you very much, Maria Helena. Are you able to stay with us, or do you have to run to the next event? Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, thank you for coming. <laughs> well, thank you for coming by. Great. Thank you for that. So, colleagues, um, I think that closes the presentation part of this event. Now it's time for our, a discussion. Um, can we open this up for for comments? Um, yeah, I've, I've got the task of MC and facilitator here. So any, let's, let's take a couple of questions at a time for uh, the FAO and EFAD team. Uh, Joe, and please introduce yourself and we need to give him a mic. Great, uh, Thank, thanks Mark. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Joe Wilson, I, I run uh, WCS Global, a very strong partner of both FAO and the GEF and so, um, um, uh, so, um, first of all, I mean, this is a, you know, uh, there's nothing more important, I think, in the world at the moment or a, a disregarded issue than food and the interlinkages with concept about biodiversity and environment. So, thank you for, for taking this effort and focusing on it. So, then, forgive me for my, my one, op which I think is probably a very obvious question, and I know you have a, probably a very good answer to it. But it strikes me we have a scaling issue as well, which is this issue between um, the profound recognition of how major, uh, big a driver is um, food system, industrialized food systems are. And the FAO produced a wonderful report just a few months ago, which highlighted just how perverse the incentives are globally. Um, over three quarters of all in, in, in uh, agricultural investments are leading to inequitable situations for communities uh, and uh, the, one of the greatest driver of, of um, biodiversity loss. At the same time, unlike the issues around subsidies for oil and gas, our 2030 target is likely, uh, as published by the FAO, to triple those negative subsidies by 2030. So help me with the scaling issue of what you're describing here. Help me with the issues of how does a project like this addre address this massive elephant in the room when you yourselves publish this excellent piece of work and the data that you suggest, the response doesn't seem commensurate with the threats we face. And I'm sure this is not part, this is one project, part of a larger picture, and I want to recognize my humbleness and not knowing the full picture, but I, it's the obvious question I think many of us um, ask. Thank you very much. So we'll, we'll take a couple of other questions and, and 
you know, we humbly request that you scale back the difficulty of the <laughs> of the question uh, to our panelists here who have just been asked to solve uh, the world food problem. Uh, please. Yeah, thank you. My name is Carlo Fadda. I work for the Alliance of Biodiversity International and SEAT. And we were partner of the first uh, of the pilot project, the uh, Jeff pilot project. And I think, I mean, from my perspective, I really commend a continuation to a much larger scale. We were able, I think, to develop tools and, uh, uh, and opportunities to really scale up the understanding and the monitoring of agrobiodiversity uh, in partnership with uh, IFAD and the FAO and the UN Environment. We develop a tool Datar, on, uh, which is able to monitor uh, the use of 63 crops, nine livestock, six aquatic species, and including the genetic diversity. But the great thing is that it's not just understanding what is there, but it really allows to set solutions. So it's based on the understanding of what the problems are and then what the solutions are to use more biodiversity. And every time you interview someone with this tool, it goes in the Jeff tracking tool and in, an, in platforms that allow really to monitor the scale. Now thinking of target 10, for example, monitoring areas under improved management. I think tools such as these that has been already developed through the previous Jeff projects, uh, I think are really, I mean, it's, it's a really step forward in terms of being able to achieve impact. So, so last question in this first group, please go ahead. I uh, thank you, Bob Tanzi from the Nature Conservancy. Our, I'm our senior policy advisor for China and global policy lead for uh, agriculture. Actually, I, I think that uh, this has the opportunity to be transformational at the scale that's uh, needed. Uh, there's enough representation there to set examples for uh, the rest of the world. Carlo and I and others much smarter than me have been involved in trying to come up with target 10 indicators. Well, um, we are here, totally agree with the Deputy Director General on the importance of soils and uh, biodiversity. There's enormous, multiple benefits can be achieved from shifts to things like low-till and no-till and cover crops and rotation crops and opportunities through those kinds of methods to provide food and nutrition to people at place. There's tens of millions of displaced people who are starving, and, and, and this can do a lot to uh, address uh, human needs. But in, in the case of Nature Conservancy, even apart from this program, we will be catalyzing 12 to 15 representative foodscapes around the world, uh, areas with common biophysical bio, uh, characteristics, but also platforms for the policy discussions that you need to support small producers in the transition that is needed. So thank you. Thanks for that. We'll, we'll, let's let, uh, we'll get to you next in the next round of questions. Je Jeff, do you want to uh, take a crack uh, at Joe's question about uh, scale and uh, and the relationship of, of this program to the scale issue that uh, Joe asked about. It seems like the other two interventions were just compliments of go forward. Thank you for, thanks for giving me the difficult question, Mark. Uh, so um, I understood Joe's question to be about policy, policy coherence. Subsidies. Yeah, subsidies. Um, uh, well, policy, I would say that uh, the program is designed to address that at two levels. Uh, one, at the country level, where there's an emphasis in the Jeff Aid program itself on biodiversity, in the biodiversity program on policy coherence, encouraging countries to bring more coherence to the policies. So there's one policy isn't encouraging unsustainable agriculture, while the other one is, in, is encouraging it. So that will be also part of the design of these national child projects at the national level. And then at the global level, um, our two organizations working with other partners will be bringing those policy discussions to the global fora as well, including at FAO through our, our Committee on Agriculture, our, uh, uh, the Committee on Food Security, and so on. So there'll be ways to scale up that discussion and, and, and tackle those, those important issues. Yeah. 
I would just like to add just um, also through the, um, through the country projects, there will be also many led by, uh, we hope, no, by the regional development banks or World Banks or IFAD or FAO or others, but, and that uh, through the investments that, because this program is three, it's uh, 230 million, but we're expecting in total program size with the leveraging and the co-financing of all the country project, more around 1.2 billion. So through also the, that's another way to scale up and where this will be looked at um, in terms of the investments coming and looking at incentives or repurposing subsidies or, so that's an agenda, you know, also in World Bank is to look at a lot. And, um, but I think yes, as, as Jeff was saying, they will be on the, on the country and the country specific and also at the global level, bringing these to the table of the discussion through the policy up. But happy to hear more on, on, you know, I haven't looked at that specific publication you mentioned, but happy to discuss more on how to make sure this is fully integrated in the, in the program. And uh, thank you, Carlo, also on the tools. I think that's the idea to build on the Jeff 6 uh, Resilient Food System program that many were involved. And that one has generated a lot of lessons and a lot of tools that were used. And then to the, the Jeff 7 fuller that is more kind of starting implementation, but so we'll, we'll definitely um, use what works and not, you know, so that they can be deployed directly and quickly. Thank you. I think, and uh, I'd just like to add uh, one response to uh, Joe's observation. Uh, you could make that argument for many of the challenges facing biodiversity and many of the drivers of biodiversity loss when you look at it as a global picture. And, and I think it's important to remember that Jeff's unit of investment is a country. We work with the individual governments during that particular moment in time. Uh, and we in, have engaged in looking at mainstreaming biodiversity into policies uh, to take care of some of those perverse uh, incentives or incentives that are harmful to biodiversity and subsidies on a kind of, it, it, it's a policy by policy, country by country basis. We have a track record of some successes uh, from early days uh, in the Jeff, uh, and I can provide those to you. Uh, I think what this program approach offers, and particularly through the, the, the communities of practice that the global coordination platform will develop, and this is across all our programs, is an attempt to address that in the individual countries that participate, but through South to South exchanges, kind of develop a shared capacity to start to address policy incoherence in some of the countries that participate. But we're not naive here. We realize the challenge is enormous uh, the response is what we can offer. The leverage of uh, that FAO and EFAD and development banks that, that might be involved include their dialogues at a policy level, right? So we would expect that in this program, some of the child projects would be led by some of the development banks that are Jeff Agency partners that have a kind of different relationship at a government negotiation level and with ministries of finance than perhaps other partners within the Jeff family uh, might have. But the uh, point's well taken. So let's take another round of questions. So, uh, so remember, please introduce yourself and uh, where you're from. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening. Well, we are uh, from the indigenous and local community. Uh, because of time, we need to move. Uh, so that's how I raise my, uh, my hand. I'm Kamal from Nepal. So I think uh, we have some gaps because uh, I noticed the, the presentation the, uh, the program should be indigenous and local community centric. We indigenous people can speak with uh, mother nature, soil and water, seeds. 
So that's we have a relationship and program policy need to be focused our principle and philosophy. But I haven't seen in the, your presentation. Maybe in future will come. We face a lot of challenge today, maybe in tomorrow, more and more. Because food system is come from our agriculture system and seeds. But the science and technology now is going faster and faster and changing the seeds, modification. Technology comes, policy comes, investment comes. The, all the, the uh, items doesn't focus what we are, what we think, what we need. So that's uh, something lacking uh, maybe in uh, uh, we, uh, will come to, uh, then we have space to share, but we haven't seen any space for indigenous peoples and local community. Thank you very much. Sister, you wanted to say something? Oh. Do you do you have to leave right now? Yes, we because have we have another event. Okay, and I have to be there. We need to be there, but uh, if you if it's okay, it's only one minute that I will take. Oh no, no, yeah. please do. But yeah. I but since you're leaving, I, I want to make sure that I give a chance to yeah. uh, the panelists to respond to your okay. very astute observation. Yeah, and so thank please, you so much then, for for, then, for giving for giving us this opportunity. When we saw the title, food systems, is so important for us. And as Kamal is saying, uh, the food systems, they, have, they are related to many things. The seeds, the land tenure, the soil, the quality of the soil, uh, then the techniques of the agriculture, and also most important, the relationships between among the people and then the people with Mother Nature, with Pachamama. And so it's important also to think what is going to happen with the produce. Is the produce only for local consume, uh, for indigenous peoples and local communities, including women, youth, and girls, and the, and the elders? And so what happens when we want to put the, the products in the market? Who is in the middle? What is happening in the middle? What is happening also with the seeds when they are modified? What is happening? What are the consequences for our people? Um, they are poor and they become more poor because of the uh, modification of the seeds. And then also we need to think um, that uh, we need to have the food. When we speak about food security and food sovereignty, which is different, we need to include everyone. I saw there the title like a program child something. For instance, in Ecuador, there is a program, one egg per day for a child. And, and only with that program, they are like giving protein to children. It's incredible that maybe here, here in the hotel, maybe we saw the, we see the eggs and we don't eat. And for other people, like indigenous people, local communities, people from the rural areas, they don't have even an egg. So we need to think about the quality the, the harmony, the equilibrium, and also don't forget, we need to, to speak about also the waste, how we are go, where we are going to put that, who, uh, uh, how we are going to deal with the waste. Uh, indigenous territories and lands, we are not the places to put the waste. If that is going to happen, it's necessary to respect our collective rights and the free prior and informed consent through the consultation. So. Thank you so much, and please forgive me, but Gladman also wants to say something. Yeah, just a short one. It's actually to also, I'm Gladman to be a member from Zimbabwe. I'm a member of the local community. Uh, my dimension actually is to look at the uh, food system in terms of the Nani timber forestry products. I think it's also one very important aspect that we need to think about because it's part of the whole package in terms of food. What are we saying about our... Um, I come from Southern Africa. We have the Mpani worm, 
it's a food. We have world um, um, world uh, relatives of food uh, seeds. During climate change uh, uh, challenges, we normally find that indigenous peoples and local communities uh, resort to the world rel their rel world relatives in terms of crops. And what are we saying about that? It's very, very important. And more important, the commodification of food products. For example, the non-timber forest product that I'm t talking about. If our program is not very strategic, you can end up having that program promoting the commodification uh, with the exclusion of, com of indigenous and local communities. So it's quite very important to think about that, bringing in local community indigenous peoples to part of this so that they own and they become part of the fight to attain food sovereignty. So I, I, I think it's important that before you leave, because I know you have somewhere else to go, if, uh, Jeff, and if, if you'd like to respond to how you envision the program uh, and, and Jeff approaches to involving IPLCs in the, in the uh, design and implementation of Jeff projects and programs. So please. Okay, I'll just, yeah, say a few words and then uh, pass it to Jeff. But yeah, I think, if, thank you so much for, for your comments. I mean, this, uh, we're just at the very beginning of this journey on designing this program, and that's exactly what we want to hear, the feedback, and make sure that we, we will design it in the best way. And just to say on indigenous people, that is, a, you know, if our um, target groups are really small-scale farmer, indigenous people, youth, women, local communities, so this is something that it's really uh, close to us and where uh, definitely will be taken into account and in the design of this program. We have the Indigenous People Forum, at the beginning of next year, focusing on biodiversity. So we will uh, make sure that we take um, this opportunity to interact more with indigenous people group uh, and, and as we, we move on this. Um, I heard also nutrition, very important, and food system transformation, definitely. Also the issue of waste. So that's uh, something which, and the, and, the, and the food system, it's include also food loss and waste, post harvest loss, so those uh, aspects will be, and, and the program is also trying to address no, uh, uh, issues of water pollution or land and soil degradation, biodiversity loss, we said GHG emissions. So there, that aspects um, will be taken into account. Uh, on the non-timber uh, forest products, um, good comments, let, let us look into that. I'm not sure it was, you know, but I think in the larger food system, there should be a place. So let, let's, let's explore that. Thank you for the comment. Maybe Jeff, do you want to come in on the more Jeff projects? The yeah, so uh, thank you again for those comments. And, and just I would say the same thing for, for FAO that Janie said about EFOD. Uh, and our, our focus is smallholder farmers and, and local communities and indigenous peoples. Um, keep in mind that what the project does in each country will depend upon the, the landscape or landscapes that are chosen in that country uh, for, for work under, the, under that project. And that, that decision will be made next year um, by countries. Uh, and so that what we'll be looking to do is make sure that that choice meets certain criteria. And indigenous peoples and local community involvement will be one of those key criteria, right? Um, so we'll be working in targeted landscapes where there are one or more of these different target systems but also doing other things in that landscape to help make sure there's a sustainable transition across the value chain. So you mentioned value chain issues of taking uh, production uh, crops and, and commodity produced sustainably to market. That's also a key element of this program. So that will be, that's the process. And, and certainly indigenous peoples, local communities will be, and gender or women will be a key criterion for selecting these projects. Okay. Uh, we have a hard stop at 11 o'clock. Uh, and so I want to thank all of you for attending. If you have further questions, please direct them to Janie and Jeff. Uh, their email addresses are here uh, for follow-up. And uh, obviously, you can talk to them. <laughs>
in person right here uh, because I, I noticed there were a few other questions. So thank you so much for attending. Uh, I hope this was... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.